Hi guys, welcome to Crazy Burger. So no doubt by this point you'll know that Evercade EXP is getting a Capcom collection. 18 games that are going to be preloaded to your Evercade EXP, either the Unlimited Edition or the White Standard version. 14 arcade games and 4 sort of console games are included, which is absolutely incredible. No doubt this is absolutely huge for Evercade and amazing that Blaze have pulled this off. Obviously, a bit disappointing we're not going to get a cart because Capcom obviously are not allowing that and this is the only way we're going to get them on Evercade. But it's still absolutely fantastic news. Hopefully we will maybe get to see them on the VS at some point as well. But the purpose of this video, I'm going to play through all 18 games, 14 arcade and 4 console games. Give you my thoughts uh, of what the games are and here are the actual games list. Um, there's quite a lot. Amazingly, I can't believe we're getting these all preloaded and pretty much for free with every Evercade EXP. Some real classic titles in there, that's for sure. Real looking forward to this one. Without further ado, let's get started with the games. Okay, so we're starting with 1942, the obviously vertical shooter, um, which it's not my favourite one of the, the sort of shooters on this list, but it's still really good. If I was thinking of any sort of vertical shooters that would be perfect for Tati mode, the Capcom 1940 series would have been the ones I would have chose, because I actually quite enjoy some of them. They're absolutely fantastic, um, and obviously this is going to be perfect for that Tati mode on the Evercade EXP. This one is particularly hard, and it's not my favourite of the bunch. Um, I particularly prefer 1943 and 19. 44, which is coming up next. Okay, so on to 1943, which you can see it's looking a little bit graphically better, and we've got the added sort of a energy meter at the bottom instead of a one hit kill scenario. Um, so you've got that, you can maybe take a few hits before you actually die, which I'm all for. Absolutely love that, makes my life a little bit easier when playing um, sort of shoot em ups, which I don't particularly enjoy, but I do like this series, I do like the 1943 and 1944 games. I think they're absolutely fantastic. Um, and yeah, that's unusual for me to say because I don't really like this genre as much, but these games are absolutely brilliant. Very addictive, probably not quite as hard as the 1942, um, which probably makes it a little bit more enjoyable for me. I quite enjoy sort of playing them in their great little games, absolutely perfect for your handheld, especially in Tati mode again. Okay, 
Okay guys, here we are with 1944, right? can you obviously tell from the graphics here that we've leaped ahead again, a lot more detail, a lot more going on, a lot more explosions, etc, and this is definitely my favourite of the bunch, it's absolutely fantastic to play, you've obviously got that energy meter uh, as well, and they've kept that on, there's so much going on in this game, it's absolutely fun, fantastic stuff to play, um, and this is definitely my favourite it probably is one of my most favourite shoot 'em ups at all. Um, I'm not a fan of this genre, obviously, but I really do like this game. Um, it's probably not as hard as the other two, especially it's not as hard as 1942, uh, which is probably why I like it. I really enjoy playing it. So much going on. It's a great little game. Absolutely brilliant. Really looking forward to playing this on the EXP. Okay guys, moving on to Bionic Commando, which is a kind of a platformer um, and you've got obviously got this bionic arm which you can use to hit enemies and sort of climb your way up through the levels. You know, it's not bad, I think it's got some control issues when I was playing here, I, I just felt it was a little bit sticky here and then it was dif difficult to actually aim the bionic arm. But you know, it's alright, it's quite playable, obviously it's a lot different to a shoot em up which I'll, I'll definitely welcome. Um, it's decent enough. Not my favourite game on the, the sort of collection, um, but it's nice, it's a decent enough challenge. I just think the controls are a little bit iffy here and there and you get stuck and yeah, you tend to die quite a lot. Or that's just me anyway. <laughs> Okay, this is Captain Commando, which is obviously a side-scrolling beat-em-up. You get a choice of four characters at start, which is quite nice. Now, what a sort of interesting point here is there's a lot of two-player games on uh, the collections here that we've got from Capcom, and there's obviously no way of playing two players on the EXP unless Evercade come up with some way of sort of linking two XPs together or maybe connecting an external. Um, sort of a joypad or something to be able to do that because a lot of these games are crying out for two player action Obviously if we get them on the VS you'll be able to do that no problem But it's something that hopefully gets looked at because there's a lot of great games It'd be great to get one of your friends or family involved and, and play two player games And there's a lot of fun to be had here on this game itself. I really enjoy it It's a little bit different from your standard sort of scroll and beat them up, you've got some bots and stuff you can sort of jump in, really nice touch, um, absolutely enjoy it, I love my beat em ups and this is a really good example of it.
Okay, moving on to Commando, and apologies right now, I am absolutely terrible at this game. I've never been able to make any progress on the arcade game at all. I just find it extremely hard, and frustratingly, there is no option. You can continue, but you start right at the beginning again. Once you sort of lose your three lives, that's really it. Back to the start again. You can't really continue from where you died, so a little bit of frustration for me. Obviously, I never can we have save state, so that might actually help or not. It is just such a brutally difficult game. Personally, I actually preferred the computer versions of Commando. It was a little bit more fun, and it wasn't quite as brutally difficult. Um, still, I'm sure there'll be people folk out there that actually love it and are pretty good at it, unlike me. Okay, we've got Final Fight. Now, I've featured this game lots of times on my channel on various devices that I've played, and there's good reason for that because I think this is an absolutely brilliant game, and it's probably one of my... F it's probably right up there with my favourite beat-em-ups ever, um, my favourite arcade ever. I mean, I could just talk all day about this game. Played it lots. We actually had the Mega CD version at home, and it was really really good, really enjoyed it. It was great playing two player as well. Even in the arcade it was great playing two player, just continually adding those 10 Ps to play this. It was absolutely phenomenal. I loved it. It was so, so good. It was pretty hard right enough, um, but obviously when you've got this you can just keep adding your um, sort of virtual coins and just keep playing till you complete it. Um, and it's one of those games you do want to complete. It's such a great, fun little game. Obviously inspired a few other things like Streets of Rage. Um, trying to copy that as well, but oh, what a game. Absolutely fantastic. Um, I could talk all day about this game. I really love everything about it. It's just perfect for me. Definitely the best scrolling beat-em-up ever. In my opinion. I'm sure everybody will disagree with that, but that's just my opinion. I love this game. Okay guys, here we have Forgotten Worlds, which I first played many years ago on the C64 on a Capcom collection of sorts. Uh, and it was tricky to control at the time, if I recall, and really quite hard because of that. Now I'm really intrigued to how Blaze are actually going to sort of map the controls, because as you can see here, your player floats, you can shoot, and you can also rotate your player clockwise or anti-clockwise. So not sure how that's going to work on the Evercade. I think ideally you'd probably want the, the sort of button mapping to be 
um, sort of mapped to the shoulder buttons where the shoulder buttons would sort of rotate the player around as you're shooting. That might be the best way. If they don't do that, I reckon that could be a nightmare to actually play. Um, it's such a fun game, but if you don't get those controls right, it could be an absolute nightmare. Um, I quite enjoyed the game. Once you sort of get used to the actual controls, it is pretty good. Uh, it's just obviously quite tricky, but it's a good fun little game, there's no doubt about it. And I think ideally a two-player game would be better played on this game as well. And crazily, this shot pops up in the middle of the level, which doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. Ah, the classic Ghouls and Ghosts. There's no doubt this is an absolutely fantastic classic game which I played in the arcades back in the day, on the C64, on the NES, you know, basically everything. Um, but there's no doubt the arcade version, it's absolutely solid stuff. Really, really difficult. Looks amazing, plays great, but oh, it is just unbelievably tough. I never ever really made a heck of a lot of progress, even though I quite enjoyed playing the game. It was just brutally, brutally hard. Um, no doubt it's an absolute classic, but I just wished it was a little bit easier. I always think that for every single game right enough, but this, this one in particular is brutally tough. Okay, this is Legendary Wings, which is probably the first game on the collection that I've never heard of, never played. And obviously if you look at it, it is kind of a, just like a re-imaging of the 1942, sort of 43 um, sort of vertical shoot 'em ups um, And it's just as hard as 1942, it's pretty tough. It's almost the same game, practically just with different graphics to be honest. Um, but yeah, interestingly, I've never heard of it, never played it. Um, I can probably see why, because I'm, I'm really pretty awful at it. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing new there then. Okay, so this is Mercs, and it's kind of a little bit like Commando, but not as hard. Um, 
and it's a lot more fun to play to be honest and I think it, obviously it's probably more designed to play two player game as well um, I quite enjoyed this one it really is quite good fun to play and like I said it's not as hard as the unbelievably brutal commando you can at least make progress through the game um, and I quite enjoyed this one it'll obviously work really well in tatty mode as well So oh, amazingly, we've got Street Fighter 2 Hyper Fighting on the Evercade. Amazing. We've probably been looking for this game for the last couple of years. I think everyone would have been clamouring for this, especially with the VS coming out um, and playing two player game. But unfortunately, we can only play one player game at the present stage. Um, and this probably wouldn't have been my choice of Street Fighter 2 games to have, to be honest, because this version is really, really tough. Uh, I would have probably preferred either the original or championship edition. Uh, Hyper fighting, you can see it's just a little bit faster. It's definitely more of a challenge. Um, and I'm obviously way, way out of practice and need to sort of sharpen up my skills a little bit. I used to be pretty good back there, but obviously I'm way, way off that now. Need a lot of practice. Definitely enjoy Street Fighter at the time on the Mega Drive, the SNES, and even in the arcades. It's a classic. It's a brilliant, brilliant sort of one-on-one -on -one beat em up is it the best of its type i have no idea but it definitely stands out there it was hugely popular back in the day sold a ridiculous amount of snes consoles uh, and then obviously we got the sort of championship edition on the mega drive amazing it was a phenomenon at the time classic and it's amazing we now have this on the arcade courtesy of the exp <laughs> So another classic Capcom title in Strider, which is a side-scrolling slash em up which clearly must have inspired um, the amazing Tanzer, which we already have on the Evercade. And this is the original arcade version, which is really good, but really, really tough. I've played this in lots of different versions and consoles over the years, um, and enjoy it, it's really good. It's just really, really challenging. Um, you'll die plenty. It's your typical arcade game. You will die a lot and you will probably just keep inserting more coins and try and get as far as you possibly can. It's very addictive stuff. But yeah, just be prepared. It is hard as nails. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
Okay guys, here we have Volgus, which is the second game which I definitely have never heard of or played, either in the arcade or on a console um, variation, but it's still a pretty decent sort of vertical shooter, it's another one for the tatty mode for sure, we're going to have loads of those games compatible with tatty mode, which is fantastic, I guess that's what Blaze are aiming for, and this is definitely one that you will enjoy, if you love your shoot maps you will probably enjoy it. Um, I just found it a little bit difficult as well, just much like 1942. But regardless, it's still pretty good fun, it's a decent enough game. Okay, so now we're moving on to the console games. That's all the 14 arcade games done. This is Mega Man, which is, I guess, must be the NES version, the original Mega Man game. You can choose from different characters there, um, which basically gives you the different sort of stages that you can play through from the get-go. Um, now, I never really got into the Mega Man games. I always found them pretty hard. Never had a NES or a SNES growing up, so obviously I would have missed these back in the day. I have played them fairly recently on the Switch, I think, um, but they are so, so hard to play through. They're quite enjoyable games, it's probably this type of game I really quite like playing, but I just wish that it wasn't as tough. Especially the original Mega Man and maybe Mega Man 2, they're a little bit of a challenge to actually play through. Um, yeah, but there's a lot to see here, I think if you've got a bit of, um, sort of patience you will probably really enjoy it. Especially with the Evercade save states, it should maybe make the game a little bit more bearable and you can maybe make a little bit of progress, because once you actually die you get sent all the way back to the beginning. Nightmare. Okay guys, here we have Mega Man 2, which is kind of a similar, I guess, to the first one. You can choose your stage here, which is great that you have access to all those different stages and a little bit of variety depending on which one you actually choose. Um, I kind of I quite enjoyed this one a little bit more than the original, um, but it is still pretty difficult and quite frustrating. But I think on the other key that will be maybe a little bit less frustration when you've got those safe states that you can access that will maybe make the game a little bit more fun to play. Um, they are quite good games, if you grew up with this you'll probably get a lot more out of it than I will. Um, never really been a huge Mega Man fan, um, but I'm sure they have tons of fans out there and they must, considering how many Mega Man games there are out there, there are tons and tons of them.
Okay, we have Mega Man X or 10. I don't really know how you would say it. Most likely Mega Man X. Um, and this is the SNES version. You can see it's graphically uh, more advanced than the NES version that we have. Uh, it's more fun to play. I can certainly feel there's more control over the character. Um, I really enjoyed this one. Um, it wasn't quite as frustrating, maybe not quite as difficult either. Um, I'll definitely be giving this one a full play on the XP. Absolutely fantastic fun. Um, yeah, I can see why people actually like the Mega Man series when you're playing such amazingly brilliant games such as this one. Fantastic. Okay, here we have Breath of Fire, last but not least. Um, this is a SNES title, it's clearly an RPG, which we are definitely needing more RPGs on the Evercade. And this looks like a pretty good one. Obviously, it's from Squaresoft. I would expect it to be extremely high quality. Um, they're obviously more famous for Final Fantasy series. Um, unfortunately, I never actually played this game back in the day. I never had a SNES, so this one would have totally passed me by. Um, so I don't know a heck of a lot about it, although we're playing through it sort of briefly, you can clearly see it's heavily inspired by other RPGs like Final Fantasy, uh, and it's got similar elements. It's got those random battles, which are a little bit annoying, but it's definitely got a lot of quality going on here. There's no doubt about it. Just don't ask me what the story's sort of happening here. I have not got a clue. And yet yeah, the start of it seems to go on for about half an hour. I kid you not.
So what seems like an eternity, you eventually get control of your character and you can sort of leave that area and then you sort of opens up to this map area where the random battles kind of a kick in, which I always found quite annoying to be honest with you. Um, and sometimes they're actually quite difficult quite early on. Um, but it screams quality this game, there's no doubt about it. If you love your RPGs I think you're really going to love getting your teeth stuck into this one. And I'm looking forward to it as well, obviously with the, the Evercade I'll probably be using a lot of save states to sort of try and make progress, cut out the frustration. Um, this one definitely screams quality, it looks fantastic and looking forward to getting stuck into it more. Okay guys, that's all 18 games played, 18 fantastic games that we're getting for free with every EXP. How is that? Absolutely fantastic. It's amazing that Blazor pulled this off and got Capcom on board to the Evercade. Hopefully this will open doors for a lot of other big names to come on board with the Evercade as well. A shame we're not getting a car or on the VS as of yet, but regardless, this is huge absolutely fantastic so well done to blaze really looking forward to getting my hands on this the exp will be going on pre-order as 6th of september you'll probably still be able to get your hands on a black one limited edition as well at that point and it will be available november 24th guys thanks for watching catch you in the next one bye for now